I broke my hand and I am done with solo RV travel. You won't believe where I'm headed next. Welcome to my channel. I'm Liz Amazing and these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence and live amazing. And I had to do exactly that, push past fear when I broke my hand seven weeks ago. Getting injured on the road was actually my biggest fear. As a solo RVer, it took just until the day after breaking my hand for me to realize that I couldn't continue. I was not able to drive. I couldn't connect or disconnect. This was a major big deal. Little did I know that breaking my hand was going to change everything in my life. And I actually am done with solo RVing. I can't wait to share with you the story. So let's get into it right now. Oh, I'm going to start over again. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Take three. <laughs> Take 300. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, isn't it funny how life is? I mean, I break my hand and I think it's the worst thing ever. And now I am so grateful that that happened because if I hadn't have broken my hand, Paul would not be here right now. That's true. We met six months ago in a campground in Silver Creek, Washington. The campground is named Paradise. So we met in Paradise. That's right. We were camping neighbors for two weeks and... Yeah, we took a couple of day trips uh, while we were there and uh, went and visited Mount St. Helen and uh, played some shuffleboard and... I beat you. Yeah, once or twice. <laughs> yeah, not every time. Not every time, yeah. And uh, then we played some ping pong and you did beat me every time on at ping pong. And uh, we just hung out. We just hung out. And just... I just looked, you know, thought of Paul as a friend and someone nice to hang out with. Yeah. And then he yeah. asked me a question. I did. On one of the on the return trip from Mount St. Helens, we had been together for the whole day and I just felt a connection with her and I in my awkward way I said, Would you kick me in the balls if I tried to kiss you? <laughs> Well, that was easy to say no to, and uh, so I said no. And um, really, I thought that was just so special. <laughs> well, so we we ended up uh, communicating just by text. There was nothing ever flirty. But after you know, I spent my two weeks there. For the following, you know, five months, we just texted back and forth, and really, it was just what, what was I texting about? Mostly about. Um stuff that you needed to buy the generator the you were looking at e-bikes and and i have an e-bike and i also have a very um, strong technical background i'm retired field engineer in the from the automotive industry so and i feel so inadequate so paul was just so great any question i asked he was right on it you know giving me advice as far as generator shopping or uh, any kind of things i needed for the hitch so it's the stuff that I'm most comfortable talking about actually it's uh, <laughs> anything technical and I, I call myself a gearhead so so at about three months ago I guess it was I sent her a text saying would you like to get together at a campground somewhere and, and yeah be camping neighbors again yeah be and, camping neighbors again. yeah and I said sure that sounded fine and then he says yeah, it was going to be, it was going to fall on my, my birthday, which was going to be a big milestone for me, my 21st. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, well, isn't that sweet? He wants to spend his birthday with me. Yeah. So I, I could feel a friendship developing and I guess right about a week before we were going to be meeting at this campground, I break my hand. Six days to be exact. I remember. Right. I was counting right. the days down. So I called him and, you know, and I was in just a world of hurt and really in a bad place. This was the, the when I called him, it was the day after I broke my hand. And that was when it really sunk in that, I mean, I could hardly get dressed. It took me 15 minutes to get my contacts in. And I realized I could not drive my rig and I had to find a place to stay for the eight weeks that my hand was going to be in the splint. So I call him and I say, well, I'm, I'm not going to go. Yeah, and I'd been really looking forward to getting together because I guess unbeknownst to her at the time, I was, um, unbeknownst to you at the time, <laughs> I was, I had an ulterior motive. I was hoping that, that, you know, us getting together at 
in Palm Desert would lead to so, dating and maybe tr following each other around for a while to see if if it turned into anything. I said, you know, I just have this urge to come to you and and uh, and help you through this tough time that you're going through with only having one hand. Honestly, thought you were going to just laugh and and maybe even hang up on me at that point. <laughs> You know, I was just so touched that he was willing to help and, you know, I, I was scared and, and, and I needed the help and it's hard to ask for help and here he is offering and it never crossed my mind that he was going to offer. He was six hours away and basically what he was saying was he was going to be moving in with me and, and, and helping. It was clear from my point of view that, that I was hoping that it would turn into something, but at the same time, given that we had never held hands or, or kissed, because she shut me down. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can believe that. <laughs> I was also afraid of what we were potentially doing up to at that point was, would torpedo any chance at a lasting relationship. He's going to move in. Well, it's just going to kill it, right? You yeah, know, it's sure. just going to be too much too soon. Yeah. And I made it clear that he's staying on the couch. I'm not going to kiss him, you know, right away. I just wanted to w focus on the friendship first. And um, so that's what happened. He drove six hours and brought a lot of stuff, didn't you? I did. Well, <laughs> He'd been soloing I'd for been a year soloing. just like yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. I'd been, I'd been traveling and I pretty much had uh, everything I owned in my trailer. So, yeah, and I, ne I needed to be comfortable. And you know, I was like, I, whatever you need to bring to make you happy, just just bring it. But he did bring a, a lot, <laughs> yeah. a lot of stuff. Well, yeah. Well, I cook, so I had a, a number of kitchen items that, that I just can't be without. And my clothes, of course, although I don't wear much besides t-shirts and shorts. And so what happens? So he moves in, he stays on the couch, he cooks for me, he washes every dish, he helps me. I mean, everything was such a struggle. Uh, you know, as you can imagine, if you've ever broken your hand or gone through anything like that, everything was a struggle. And he was there helping me, even helping me uh, blow dry my hair, right? And helping me on yeah. shoots because YouTube is still happening. So I'm still shooting, but he's helping with that. Yeah. So long yes. story short, I let him kiss me. Yes, she did. <laughs> So, so what this means is now I am done with solo RVing because I am a we, we are together and um, we have so much more to share together now with the channel because Paul has such a strong mechanical background. He knows plumbing, he knows electrical, and I feel really inadequate with that. So I'm excited with him being able to share his knowledge. Yeah, one of the big challenges for both of us really has been integration, you know, bringing what stuff do I bring and what stuff do I leave behind and vice versa for, for Liz, you know, she's going to have to get rid of some things. <laughs> we have a crock pot Instapot war going on right now. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I brought the Instapot, Instapot and, and it's staying. It's, uh, <laughs> I want to keep my crock pot. So we'll, we'll keep you, we'll keep you posted on the challenges and, um, and tips and tricks of, you know, how to do it. And if you have advice, absolutely share it in the comments because we appreciate it. We're new at this. We're yeah. learning along the way. And, and we've, been, we'll... we've been doing this for what, seven weeks now? Yeah. If you think this relationship is doomed and it's going to go up in flames, <laughs> then, then you need to keep watching. <laughs> it might.